All right, hello everybody. This is Josh Cook, aka Seizures Palace, and welcome to the Song A Week series, where we are at the fourth installment within the series. And this is a song that I started to write uh, late last night. I had no idea I was going to be even writing a song last night. I was tired around 10:30, 11, and picked up a wind around 12:30, and worked on this until about 1:30 a.m., which is uh, the witching hour for producers. It can either go really well, and you find yourself coming up with all these great new tracks, or you can find yourself working backwards in songs that you probably should have left till the next morning. Anyway, um, I was going for something totally different on this one. Not the tempo, though. It's still at 110 beats per minute. I'm on a 110 kick right now. Um, I was going for more of a triplet feel and I realized that now that I'm on my laptop I don't have a lot of my sound samples available because it's in a hard drive that I used to have going through my USB hub and now it's in my desktop. So uh, I got um, some of the Ableton sounds pulled up and uh, I just went through those in terms of the drums anyway and I got some pretty basic sounding drums that worked really well in this particular song. Here's the drum samples that we're working with and Instantly, I was brought back to like old Daft Punk, like homework kind of thing. I could throw in a little bit of saturation to get it a bit more analog sounding, but you might notice some of these drum sounds are, are kind of similar from uh, early Daft Punk sounds. Here we go. Nothing too intense, right? So I'll just take you through it. Let's listen to it first, and then we'll go forward from there. Here it is. keeps going on like that it's a really repetitious track you could call it something close to progressive house progressive 110 beat per minute house we'll call it progressive mid-tempo something like that there's really not too many themes going on it's more just developments of layers unlayering adding layers that kind of idea super simple i, f I had the um the first synth was this and i Started this whole session with designing a synth from scratch, and uh, I've seen some videos on how Kill the Noise makes his growl sounds, and he uses this carbon quite a bit. I did carbon mixed with deep throat and a little bit of a sine wave to give some low end to it. And here was the first sound that I came up with. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. So soloing. We'll loop that. And I didn't have an arpeggiator on it, so it started like this. It didn't start so simple. I was uh, playing a bunch of different things before trying to get like some riff. By the way, I realized this sounds nothing like Kill the Noises stuff. I just kind of started with similar um, oscillators and then kind of uh, deviated from there. Just wanted something with a little bit of motion. I know that carbon actually, as I move carbon around, it's really cool. It's got like a million shades. Check this out. So I find with carbon, there's a sweet spot where you can hit a lot of the lows. Otherwise, it tends to thin out a bit, but that can have a cool sound too. I've also done a little bit of, or added a bit of noise uh, that's attached to an envelope. So it kind of swells in for each note. Um, so from there, I threw an arpeggiator on it. And then we had, 
And then I like to zoom in and kind of see how all my layers are adding up. So right now I have these two. Remember that liquidy part that came in, this guy here? So I'm able, to, I'm able to add those two layers together and you get something like Now that one that's echoing really intensely. It's funny, I don't like I don't know where that echo is coming from. I really should, but there's two reverb eq i haven't added any delay through uh my sends so i don't know it still works though so i'm happy with it um i ended up using this uh, preset called absolute and i changed it around a bit this like originally it sounded like this and just playing around with the band reject cutoff i opened it up with this really cool sort of uh, deep, I don't know if it's an English sort of sound or what, but it just reminds me of something closer to like a deep house or something kind of like that. So anyway, I blended those two together. And then after that, I was trying to find where there's some space. So you'll notice that there's a pretty good sized chunk of space in between this area here. So I have this chug shot here. So which was just this guy. Together again, you get the so that's where we're at right now. I did one other thing, so I took all these different synths and they're just kind of all filling in the space for one another. You can really see it here where there's like some MIDI information here and then some here and then some here, just kind of almost like a complexro or a was it complex complex electro or complex or sort of sound electro house if you would um so nothing too crazy going on there and then i grouped them all together and i did yet again that auto filter side chaining sort of technique only i didn't really bring it down too much so i brought down the frequency to just under 10 kilohertz 3.7 a little bit under 10 anyway just to sweep out some of the airiness listen to it with and without i'm just gonna do the um the higher part here the top chug I called it so it's subtle listen again one more time I'm gonna let it play with the softened version and then with a little more crisp here's the crisp you can hear the dynamics aren't as in control either, right? So I swept out some of that. The thing is I bring it back in for various sections. You'll notice off the very start of the song, it softened a bit. And then for this breakdown, then I keep it into the drop. And then, and then I make it a little quieter right here. Right, and perhaps quieter isn't the right word, but again, just sweeping out some of those high frequencies. Also, I've done some sidechain compression, kept it really classic. Not too, too much, but my ratio is cranked, my attack is cranked. I should have had my 10 millisecond look ahead on, so we'll turn that on. I didn't put on much of a knee. It's cool. As I was playing around with that knee, I was noticing the bass drum really popping out and being more aggressive. So I don't normally do this, but I set my knee so that the bass drum felt like it was kind of in this nice little pocket. So normally I would do that with the threshold. It just worked really well with the knee in this particular track. And then I set my release to taste, so to speak. Um, yeah, and there's a little breakdown section coming up here too. <laughs> glitching in the drums. Right, and that's kind of where I left off last night. I'm going to do about five or ten minutes of mixing. I'm not going to mix the whole thing, but maybe you guys can just kind of watch my process a little bit as I go here. So let's just listen to the drums for a second. I'm going to take one of the heavier drops, which would be here, loop it. We're just gonna start with the drums.
So just took out a little bit of annoying ring from the clap. And I think a lot of that ring that I was hearing actually was coming through more in the reverb. But by killing it on the clap first, not as much of it was actually going into the reverb. Um, but again, make sure that you EQ your reverbs. I hadn't even got that far yesterday. Let's, uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I get rid of this EQ on my clap. Oh, again, Josh, stay focused. You guys might not be able to see this because of the, uh, the webcam. But uh, I'll try to make it more clear for the reverb here. Oh, yes, Ableton 9. Perfect. Okay. So I'll just pop it up here. So we're going to listen to the reverb on the clap for a second. Solo it. Hear that ring? So that's what I was hearing before. We're just going to get rid of it out of the reverb this time. Sounds much better to me. There's one other ring. Let's listen for it. It's a whatever pitch that is. Let's find that. There it is. Gonna be a little less kind with that one and give it a pretty good dip. Um, there's no way, I mean, right now there's some EQ on the reverb, but there's no way I want any of that really low stuff coming through on the reverb. So I'm just gonna hedge my bets and make sure that all that stuff is swept out uh, about 300 hertz or so. The view's going all crazy on me here. Let's try something. Anyway, we'll have to bear with that for a minute. Um, so yeah, that's the clap being fixed up a little bit. Let's listen to it again. Yeah, that ring's mostly gone now. So I didn't actually have to take it out of the clap. That's kind of nice. I am still going to sweep out some of the lows from the clap. Again, just to make sure none of that stuff is leaking through. It might not be a bad idea to sw sweep out everything above about 10 kilohertz or so depending on what I want in that top airy portion but for now I'm going to keep it and then when I do some really intense mixing on the speakers later I'll double check how that's sounding by the way a really cool approach to double checking how your frequencies are sitting are using an auto filter or is using an auto filter within your master chain this is nothing new everybody does this if you don't you should um, it just helps you isolate what you're hearing so sometimes when there's a lot of low frequencies happening they kind of mask the mid lows or when there's a lot of airy high frequencies they kind of mask the high frequencies so it's nice to be able to go through and just kind of see what's happening using your auto filter and um basically you want to make sure that you try it a few different ways so i've tried some high pass and some low pass and that kind of idea and just sweep around and make sure that you're referencing so what i'll do is i'll listen to my song where i'm only hearing everything below 140 hertz and i'll do the same thing on another person's track right now i've been really liking savant if you haven't checked him out check him out he's freaking amazing um he does every sort of genre and that kind of stuff so I, with any reference you want to make sure you pick out a song that's kind of similar to your own i haven't found one for this particular track yet uh, I'd almost go more toward more towards like Trent Reznor's sort of stuff. Um, but anyway, it'll allow you to kind of hear just the sonic energy um, and how how it's related to your reference. So if I hear that there's a whole lot of bass drum, like if we just listen to this for a second. Right, so that's only bass drum that we're hearing. If I was to turn on the synths, let's try that one more time. So right now the bass and the bass, the kick rather, and the bass are kind of similar in terms of their energy. If I go even lower, let's just listen. Lots of juicy sub information happening down there. And then around 100 hertz, the bass kind of picks up a bit. Between 100 and 200, we're hearing a little more of the bass drum. So there's this pocket. On the low end, it's a lot of bass drum and a bit of sub bass. And the bass kind of picks up. And then above that, between 100 and 200, there's more uh, kick information happening on systems that don't have subs. So you're still hearing a kick on your laptop or something like that. Now right around 800 there, when it opened up, it's a little bit easier to hear this one kind of annoying frequency that's popping out. I don't know on which synth it's happening on yet, but let's double check it. It's this guy. 
And I didn't hear the annoyingness until about seven or 800 hertz, so I'm gonna look around that area. Hear that ring? be gentle and take it down a tiny bit now I didn't hear that until I tried this particular technique so everything sounded nice and smooth it sounds much better now so let's take the frequency up a little bit more so there we're just getting some crunch <laughs> that delay is crazy we're getting some crunch from the synth and just above that we should start to hear the clap and the tick or the high end the beater of the kick really start to come out let's listen to that and then we have our crunchy hi-hats up at the top and then i'll do the opposite i'll take it and start with the um the low cut filter we'll call it um sometimes the high pass low pass stuff gets confusing so we'll just call it a low cut filter um up at the top end and sweep it down and again i'm waiting for once i make that tiny little sweep if i hear something annoying i know it's within that range so if i was at two kilohertz and then i sweep down to one and all of a sudden something pops out as being annoying i know it has to be somewhere hopefully between one and two kilohertz or around that general area let's try that out so at this point i imagine how would the song sound if it was just on like the tiniest little set of speakers well all we're really hearing right now is the drum so let's put the synth back in This is with that filter on. Let's take it off. Hear the difference there? All that sizzle? Even still, it sounds like it's a little bit much. Good. We're hearing all the information, though, which is nice. Nothing's too overbearing. Bring it down a bit. Yeah, when I'm at like two and a half, three kilohertz, I'm not hearing much of the clap. And then in between about one and three, it really starts to open up. More of the bass drum coming in. And then right around this time, I would set one filter to be down at 30 hertz and cut everything below about 30 hertz. The other one I'm going to turn off, and this is going to be, the first one's going to be my analyzer, we'll call it. And then the other auto filter, I hope you guys can see that around the picture. That one is set so that way the frequency is down to about 30 hertz and it's a little bit of a roll off on the low end. Um, in terms of mastering, not much has been done. Nothing worth mentioning, just a little bit of limiting. You can just use your onboard uh, Ableton limiter or whatever limiter you have available to you. From what I understand, the invisible limiter is supposed to be really good. I did the trial version of that. It was fantastic. Might end up buying it at some point soon. So yeah, in terms of the mix, I mean, I'd have to get pretty picky through some speakers at this point. We got rid of some resonating frequencies. Let's give it one more listen as a final run through. <laughs> Cool. So I was able to push up my average level pretty high because there's not a lot of parts happening. There's a dinky little kick drum and a little tiny clap and some hi-hats and then synths that are mostly all happening at different times. Um, and yeah, that kind of allowed me to drive up my levels more. So remember, if you want hotter levels, don't have so many layers. I'm notorious for over layering. Um, and at the end of the day, I... I don't want to get rid of a bunch of layers just so I can drive my mix up. I'm not about to compete in the loudness wars to a point where it compromises my work. But I do have to understand that when I do that, I won't be able to hit levels as hot. Or I have to start really doing some serious carving in my EQ to leave pockets for all the individual instruments. Anywho, uh, I think that's all I wanted to mention about this song. And... Yeah, right now it's called, what, Industrial Chug. It'll be song a week number four. 
Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this walkthrough and uh, like the tune, it's something a little bit different as it will probably be again next week. I'll try to do something that isn't at 110 beats per minute just to vary it up a little bit. One more time, my name is Josh Cook, a.k.a. Seizures Palace. This is the fourth song a week. Stay posted. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next week. You stay glassy, sand. Sand. <laughs>